So in this talk, I'm going to consider a certain type of integration by parts setup, which is you have a polynomial times an inverse trig or a logarithmic. And the general rule for this, using the Eilert rule, which I have here, is to take the inverse trig or log, which is more on the differentiator, take that as the part to differentiate and take the polynomial, which is the algebraic thing, as the part to integrate. The hope is that the inverse or log thing, when you differentiate, becomes algebraic, and then you're taking a product of that with the derivative of the pol with the, sorry, the product of that with the integral of the polynomial, and that's a purely algebraic integration, which is a simpler problem in some sense. You may not know how to do all algebraic integrations, but there's a there's a sense in which in which they are done. Okay, so now let's do the first example. Now, in some of these examples, it will turn out the algebraic integrations are not that easy to do. So, even if you don't know how to do them, once you see integration of rational functions, it will be clear. So, you can ignore the later parts of the question where I'll just throw some ideas at you, which you may not have seen. Okay, let's start with ln x dx. Well, so this is a product of, is it a product? It just looks like one piece to me. What's the product of one and ln x. So, this is ln x times 1 dx. So now I take the polynomial part 1 as the part to integrate. So this is a trick you need to do. So whenever you have something like this, well like this, you just put a 1 there as take the part. So it's ln x times x minus the integral of derivative of ln x is 1 over x, 1 over x times x dx so I can just read ln x x as x ln x, it makes it look nice. So minus the integral of 1 dx. So that becomes x ln x minus x plus c. So notice what happened here at this stage. I went, I once I differentiated the logarithm, this new integral was a purely algebraic integral. In fact, in this case, it's a purely polynomial integral. Okay, so far so good. So now let's consider the next one, x ln x dx. So you have to be a little careful because I wrote them in the in the order which isn't the order in which one usually writes it for integration by parts. Okay, so x is the part to integrate and ln x is the part to differentiate. So don't be misled by the way I've written. Okay. So it's actually ln x times x if you're thinking of the usual way you, you write integration by part problems. So this is what? It's ln x times the antiderivative of x, which is x squared over 2, minus integral of derivative of ln x is, let's just get down here, oh, I have the derivative written here. Derivative of ln x is 1 over x. I didn't bring it out last time, but We'll keep it handy now. So 1 over x times x square over 2 over 2 dx, which is first hand is it, it's x square or times ln x over 2 minus integral x over 2 dx. Okay, now this is a purely algebraic integration. That's the, that's the reason why we take log as the part to differentiate. Because once you differentiate, you get a purely algebraic integration here. So it's x square ln x over 2 minus, there's a half outside, x dx will give x square over 2. So you'll get x square over 4, four plus c. Now, if you want to differentiate and check, you get the same answer. What will happen is you apply differentiate this, differentiate this, both their dif well, this differentiation will use the product rule. You get a sum of two things. One of those two things will cancel with the derivative of this and the other one will be exactly this. Okay, so what do you use to do this differentiation? The product rule, as expected, because when you're reversing integration by parts, then you get, then you have to use the product rule to do that. Okay. So next we need to consider Arctan. Now, arctan type integrations are a little trickier, as in the integration by parts is not trickier, but the integral you get after doing it 
is a little trickier because it's going to be a rational function rather than a polynomial. So wait, what? How is this a product? It's one times. So there's a one here. Okay. So. So it's octan x times the integral of one, which is x minus. I need to be a little careful. What's the derivative of octan? We have it right here. Derivative of octan is 1 over 1 plus x square. Times x dx. Okay. Right. Okay. Good. Now we are a little stuck because this is not immediately obvious what this is. It's not just a polynomial integration. You have a rational function here. So I'll just tell you how you do this one in particular. If you know the general theory, that's great. But in particular, this one, the denominator, the derivative of the denominator is what? 2x. And the numerator is x. Right? So the numerator here is half of the derivative of the denominator. Let me rewrite this as by the way, whenever you do integration by parts, always remember to keep copying down this first term. Okay, because sometimes you get so engrossed in doing this integral, you forget about this thing. x octan x minus half of, bring a half here, and so now the numerator is the derivative of the denominator. So what's that going to be? When the numerator is the derivative of the denominator, what does that integrate to? natural log of the denominator. That's a half plus c. Put the plus c. Let me just write that down explicitly. So, maybe I'll write it down here along with these. So, it doesn't talk. Integral of g prime over g is natural log of, well, in general, it will be natural log of absolute value gx. Right? Plus, I yeah, won't write that down. But 1 plus x square is always positive, so you don't have to put an absolute value there. Okay? So that's the third integral. We're making good progress here. Okay? Let's do x half tan x dx. I'm doing these sort of progressively faster, or rather the easy parts of, the common parts of these I'm doing progressively faster. So this is octan x times x squared over 2 minus integral, derivative of octan is 1 over 1 plus x squared, okay. Now this one is a little, uh, tricky. The trick is you want to rewrite. So I, I have to keep copying down. What should I not forget to copy down every time? Yeah, this term. Minus half. Now this part, as I pull the half out, x squared over 1 plus x squared, I'm going to rewrite it as 1 minus 1 over, uh, is this captured? This is basically it follows from the fact that you have what's an improper fraction x squared over 1 plus x squared and you do Euclidean division and get it into a mixed fraction form. Okay, it's, it's part of the general theory of integrating rational functions. If you don't understand that part, that's okay. It's, that's not really the integration by parts aspect. So keep copying this down. Minus What's the integral of 1? One? 1 half x. So x plus. Well, plus would be after you open the parentheses. Yeah. So what's the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared? Well, it's octan again. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to re rearrange, let me just do it here. So this. The half, plus half octan x, you can bring that together, you get x squared plus 1 
arc tan x over 2 minus x over 2 plus c. Okay, so we left with one more. This is a quick one. So what's the secret thing to integrate? One. One. So you get x arc sine x. And now let me bring this out. There we have arc sine x is 1 over root 1 minus x squared. So minus integral 1 over root 1 minus x squared times x. I'll just sort of skip that writing as a product and directly write it like this. Okay. Hmm. Now what, how do you do this? Well, this is, I would say, it's a little to do a little thinking, but you basically have to do a u substitution. You can put u as 1 minus x squared. Okay, so on just this piece, okay, you know, they're not doing the integration parts anymore. So it's x arc sine x minus integral of well if u is 1 minus x square then du dx is minus 2x so this is plus 1 half one du half. over root u where u is 1 minus x square okay got that correct so the integral of u to the minus half du is u to the half over half. The half and half will cancel. And I mean, I'm doing this in my head, but you probably may want to do more steps. Uh, so you'll get just get plus square root of 1 minus x square plus c. Okay, so that's your answer. So, you see, in all these cases, the number of times you have to do integration purpose is 1. And it, it actually doesn't really matter what the degree of the polynomial is. Then you have to do integration by parts once because you just need one step to bring everything into the polynomial or algebraic domain. And after that, you have to use some strategy to integrate rational functions or radicals or polynomials. You use different strategies, different places.